What's up guys? My name is Casey and this is eBay Miniature Rescue. Today we're going to fix up an old Logan Grimnar. Oh, and I also got some new brushes. Look at these disgusting brushes. God damn it. This won't do. <laughs> it's going to ruin all these miniatures with these. Let's just throw them away. <laughs> Time for an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, let's push these forward. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, shit. He's coming. Wait, I, I, I gotta run. Gotta uh, some bye. Brushes. Those are ridiculous. I fell out of my mind. Got too close, can't deny. Where have you been all my life? It's a sin. Love is blind. All jokes aside, Emil from Squidmar Miniatures sent me a set of his upcoming brushes about two months ago. I've gotten a lot of questions lately about the brushes that I've been using, and now I can finally say that they are officially Squidmar brushes. I do want to talk about these brushes a little bit more, but for now, let's jump to the model and check out what kind of work needs to be done. I picked up Logan on eBay for eight bucks with free shipping, which I thought was a really awesome deal for this old sculpt. The only major issue was he was missing his signature axe head, and I mentioned this in a video a while back, and to my absolute surprise, Paolo from Australia had an extra one. I just received the axe the other day in the mail, and I thought this would be perfect for this week's video. Aside from the axe head, Logan really isn't in very good shape. Using a hobby knife, I take off any mold lines, extra bits of resin, and just generally give the model a good cleaning. There were some areas, like the axe handle and cloak, that had a ton of glue around it. My guess is that the previous owner accidentally broke the axe off and just lost the head. In order to fix this a little more permanently, I need to pin all the parts together using a small hand drill and some paper clips. Once the pieces were fit together properly and the chances of breaking off drastically reduced, I went ahead and began working on the base.
This model absolutely deserves a hero's base. His triumphant pose demands just a little bit of drama. I started with a general covering of sand for the base, a little PVA and a quick dip into some beach sand and there you go. Not a terrible way to get quick bases for a majority of your army. And like Brent over at Goobertown says, bring your Tupperware when you go out. There are always basing bits you can find and keep for later. I used some bark to create a cliff top that he could stand on and pinned him down with another paper clip. He's definitely not going anywhere now. After all the glue was dry, I primed him using Badger Steiner Res Black. Next up, we have a great go-to for Space Wolves in Stino Res Blue-Gray. I also added a little bit of white into the pot to do that top most highlight. For the face, I'm going to base coat using Cadian Flesh Tone. I like this color as a base coat because it's right in the middle for skin. Wash adds a lot of shadow and there's still a ton of room for highlights. Vallejo Metal Color Burnt Iron as a base coat for all of the silver metallic bits. I wanted something a little bit different for the metals on Logan, so I opted for this really dark metal. That way, when we come in and highlight it with a lighter silver, it has a nice dark finish to it that still looks really metallic. Gray Seer will be a great base coat for the fur cloak. It will set us up nicely for some good washes. I wanted to go in with some nice contrasting darker metals for the rest of these parts. Vallejo Metal Copper is one of my favorites. It's a pretty bright copper, so it can read a little bit like gold, and you can really darken it down and weather it if that's what you're into. Not this time though. Clean metals will definitely do the job. So let's talk about these brushes. Emil over at Squidmar Miniatures asked me if I wanted to try them out before the Kickstarter launches on June 15th. If you're watching this video on the day of release, that's tomorrow. I've really been putting them through their paces for the last two months, even using them with metallics, which you're really, really not supposed to do. Ever. I've also been cleaning them regularly, pretty much all of the things I would do with my expensive brushes. Honestly, these things are legit. 
They have really nice tips. The bellies hold paint for what feels like forever. So much that I almost always feel the need to go back to the palette, but the paint is still flowing. Even with the abuse that I put them through, they're still going very, very strong after those two months. And I plan on continuing to use them. If you're looking into upgrading your brushes, check out the Squidmar Miniatures Kickstarter that launches June 15th. Emil, thanks for the brushes, and I wish you all the best with the Kickstarter. Rhinox hide for the leather strap on his back and his belt, which you really can't see behind the cloak. Troll Slayer Orange is a base coat for the hair. After those base coats are done, it's time to start filling in some detail and bringing this model up a step. I'm going to start with contrast medium and snake bite leather. With a good amount of medium mixed in, I'm going to try and evenly coat the entire wolf pelt. This will give it an older hide look and still keep a lot of the highlights and detail in the fur. If contrast is only good for one thing, it's doing texture pieces like fur. It works really well. So next up, I'm going to mix a little bit of white and rust gray together to get a nice edge highlight for this kind of light Space Wolf gray. Hi. Um, can I help you? Um, did you know that that is the same color scheme that you painted Last week. Okay. I mean, it's just, it's the same. Yeah, I guess they are, but it's a space wolf. You should know. All right. Um, I don't know. I like the colors. Hmm. <laughs> don't, don't know what to tell you. All right. Anyways, I'm going to edge highlight all of the armor and then water it down into a glaze consistency to place some longer highlights across the higher points. You know, that strange guy might be right. This is pretty close to last week's video. Oh well, this model rocks and we're just going to keep going. Reichlin Flesh Shade on the face and hair will bring in those shadows, and I'm also going to use it on the copper to darken it down a little and give some nice warmth to those recesses. After those washes are dry, I'm going to coat the entire model in a gloss varnish in order to get prepped for an all-over wash of gnome oil. With the gloss varnish, the known oil will slip into all of the recesses and really give shape to this model. If any of the shade starts to settle on flat surfaces, I'll just wipe it away with a damp brush. That way, we have a nicely shaded model and we've preserved our colors.
For the face, I'm going to use Scale 75's Light Skin and progressively mix in Vallejo White for brighter highlights. Starting with the light flesh, I just layer over all of the details, leaving the wash in the recesses. Then with a hint of white, start to layer smaller and smaller sections of his face. And finally, with almost pure white, just put that last little bit onto the highest, sharpest points. That way, his face is really the first thing you see when you look at the model. To highlight all of the hair, I went for Fire Dragon Bright. Picking out the individual strands really punches up the orange. This has always been one of my favorite combos for orange hair. Super fiery. I realized that at some point I had some either black paint or black wash on one of my fingers. You can still see it on my fingertip. And of course, it got on the model and dried. Let's bring in some of that edge highlighting color and create some battle damage on that leg. One of those kind of happy little accidents, if you will. I'm going to dry brush using Screaming Skull all over the cloak. This will bring out the fur detail and brighten everything up. The last thing to do before the reveal is to add some icy snow to the base. A little bit of glue and a sprinkling of snow and he's looking frosty. So a couple of quick things before we get to the reveal. I want to give a huge thank you to Paolo for sending me Logan's axe head. This model just wouldn't have been the same without it. Don't forget to check out the Squidmar Miniatures Kickstarter for those Mark I brushes. They are fantastic. And honestly, not to be missed if you're into painting even a little bit. And finally, this model will be going back up on eBay, as always, starting at the same price that I purchased the model for originally. I really enjoyed this model. Yeah, the color scheme is a bit similar to last week's, but this is a true-to-form Space Wolf. Logan Grimnar has a fantastic sculpt, tons of character, and an overall kind of menacing appearance. Something that fits with the theme and makes me very happy. Thank you for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. If you liked something about this video, please hit that like button. And for more rescues each week, please subscribe. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.